Today I wanted to talk about dual wielding. How realistic is it? What might be the advantages and disadvantages? And how could it be handled in the rules? Now, at first glance, one might think if I've got a weapon in each hand, I uh, should get two attacks each round, one with each hand. And you could handle it like that, but then I would give each attack a penalty because you're not committed to this one attack as if you were if you were just attacking with one weapon. Because a uh, weapon attack is not just a movement of the arm, a committed attack is a movement of the whole body. So if you do a committed attack with this weapon, this won't be able to do as committed an attack. I could do it somewhat like this. Still, it's not as committed an attack as if I were just using one weapon and putting everything I got into this one attack, trying to get past my enemy's defenses. That's one thing that is worth considering, is that you're trying to hit a moving target that is defending itself and also um, countering your attack, parrying and reposting all the time. And you're trying to get past this defense and try not to get hit yourself. Now, in my experience, dual wielding actually really helps with that. And there are several ways you can accomplish that. Let's put the axe away for now. Uh, having one sword in one hand would be your basic situation in most fantasy games. And you can attack fairly well, you are quick, you are committed. And this, this is our base level, this is our plus minus one, one attack per round. But I still got my left hand free. I got my left hand free and I could carry within it a torch or lantern. And something like a torch you could already use to dual wield. I don't have a torch here. Let me pick up the axe again. Imagine this would be a torch. If I were carrying a torch, I could put it right into my opponent's face, trying to blind him, making him flinch, then strike at his leg. I could use it also to parry, or I could throw it at my opponent. Torch can be a useful weapon. Even if I am not carrying anything, the hand is still a useful weapon. I can use it to grab onto my own sword, especially if I'm wearing armored gloves and I won't hurt myself. But now I got more strength. I could do a more precise thrust. Technical half sorting, by the way. Or I could use it to block a really heavy attack and block it like this and put my all against it. That would be smarter to uh, deflect that attack or avoid it altogether. Move out of the way. But you can also use your hand to offend your opponent. If your opponent gets into a bind with your weapon and you get close enough, you can grab his wrist, grab his arm. If it's not a sharp blade or even if it's a sharp blade, you can grab his weapon get it out of the way and then whack him. Oh, on that note, you can use armor in that respect. You can use armor to offend your opponent, to help you hit him. Because you are immune to uh, many attacks, uh, especially of bladed weapons, you can just 
fully commit to an attack without regard to uh, deflect any counters, without regards of getting hit and just wail into the peasants around you. Or you could use it to trick your opponents. If I were to go into a high guard, my opponent might strike me in here, then I can lower my arm, trap my opponent's weapon between my arm and my arm, I'm free to attack him uh, at leisure. Now back to dual wielding. So, one-handed weapon, one hand free would be your base, but your plus zero, no bonuses, no penalties, base situation would be one hand you don't use in combat. You can carry a torch, you can carry a lamp with it and just use the sword. Now the situation where you use both your hand and your sword could be something like a fighting style or a feat and it doesn't help that much in defense. You can defend with it but of course you risk injury to your hand. But if you have to choose between injury to your hand and injury to your head you should choose your hand every time and try to just survive. But in offense, this is a great tool to grab your enemy and wrestle with your enemy. So this fighting style could be something like a fighting style of feet. And it could give you like plus two to attack, plus d4 to attack. Or just give you special maneuvers, like you get a free grapple each round, something like that. Next step up for dual wielding would be using a smaller weapon in your free hand, like a knife. Why would you do it? It gives you more capacity to offend. If you go into a bind with your opponent, you can cut to his hand. and gives you the ability to defend and attack at the same time. Because a knife doesn't have a lot of reach, it's not so useful in the offense, not as useful as your main weapon, but uh, you can still use it to control your opponent's weapon and get it out of the way for an attack with your main weapon. And I would handle this by giving a bonus, especially if the character is trained in this fighting style, would give a bonus to both attack and defense. Maybe plus two, plus two, something like that. Now the next step up would be using two full-sized weapons in each hand. This is what you usually think about when you say dual wielding. Just wail into your enemy from all directions. Can you do it? Sure you can, but how effective is it really? I uh, still wouldn't just double the number of attacks, as I said in the beginning, but uh, this is a fighting style that has a lot of potential. Now you have two weapons with the same reach. You can use both of them to offend your opponent with. This is a big attack bonus, I think. And you also have the ability to use two different weapons, like here, sword and axe. And these have different capabilities. The sword is more versatile. It's usually a bit easier, a bit faster in the hand. And you can use it for thrusting. The axe, on the other hand, has a devastating chopping attack. There's a lot of power concentrated in the head of an axe. That's why I use it for chopping trees and wood. But it also has the ability to hook. So you can hook the opponent's weapon out of the way and then strike him with your other weapon. You can hook it uh, on your opponent's body, throw him off balance, hook his feet and give you opportunity to attack with your other weapon. So what I like to do when fighting with my axe and my sword like to put them out way in front 
and then try to get a hook on my opponent's weapon to open him up for a strike. Now in defense, this is still pretty good because you can defense more areas of your body at the same time and if you want to defend against a really attack you can like cross your weapons and uh, put your whole body, your whole strength in it which can come in handy and it of course also gives you again more opportunity for repost. You can pair with both weapons then get the opponent's weapon out of the way, controlled with the axe, striking with the sword. But if you're using two long weapons, they can also get in each other's way. You're trying to swat away an opponent's weapon to displace a thrust, to throw a thrust offline. What can end up happening is that you get entangled in your own weapon. And then it is easier, it is not a problem if you're using a short weapon. I can displace thrust to my body all day long without worrying to run into my own sword. Not so much with the axe. These can and will hinder each other. Still, I, I like this fighting style. It's very controlled style. It's a style that controls your opponent really well. So I personally would give it like plus three to attack, maybe plus four, and uh, plus two to defense. Still, no extra attacks, no extra damage. They could use another fighting style and just try to throw as many attacks at your opponent as you can and that would be what I described at the beginning. You get the extra attack you want but each attack is not as committed as uh, an attack of a single weapon would be. So you get an extra attack and a minus four to hit or something like that. Now what many don't consider dual wielding, but I totally do, is the use of a shield. And this is historically by far the most prevalent use of dual wielding. A shield is just such a tr strong, such a strong defensive tool especially in a battlefield situation where arrows and attacks can come in from any direction that you really want to have a shield and not a flimsy knife in your hand. If the sky is blackened by arrows you want to be able to get beneath your shield. So no question this is a great defensive tool but you can also use it to offend your enemy. It's actually similar to the use of the axe and sword from before. I can use this to control my opponent's weapon, to displace them, to bind them, and then opening my opponent up for an attack. You could also just use it to get into your opponent's face, block his view, and then attack him where he can't see. Get right up in his face. Wonder how that shot came out. You could also use the shield to strike. Strike with the edge, strike with the boss of the shield. That will do uh, a bit of damage, but not a lot. But once again, it might throw your opponent off balance, opening up for strike with the axe, strike with your main weapon. And if you're carrying a sturdy, heavy shield, 
you can do some deadly attacks with the edge. You can throw your whole weight in it, your whole body in it, and that will hurt. In my opinion, this is the best form of dual wielding. Using a shield in your offhand I would give you a huge defensive bonus. Um, let's start somewhere by plus four. Even a very small shield, like if it were just as big as this boss here, is a buckler, would still be a better defensive bonus than uh, having a, a dagger on my offhand. So it was, would still be a plus two, plus three. Even if I were to wrap my cloak around my arm, so I can use my cloak to block, it would still be a defensive bonus of at least plus one. But a shield is a huge defensive advantage. But it is also an offensive tool. In my opinion, not as much as having a, uh, an axe or a sword in your offhand. That has a more devastating attack. Um, but you can really use this to control and hinder the movement of your opponent, opening him up for attack. So it would give it at least a d4, a plus two bonus to attack as well. Now why wouldn't you use a shield all the time if it's so damn good? Main reason, uh, uh, two reasons. Convenience, you don't carry that shield around with you all of the time. So if you're just carrying a weapon for self-defense, you usually would have something like a sword and knife. So would be fighting with this in a self-defense situation. When you get into a fight, you have not expected. But you can always carry around a knife and can carry around a sword. It's not hard to carry it. Very convenient weapons to carry. Or you could uh, carry around a small shield like a buckler, uh, a cloak, something like that, no problem. Another reason, uh, reason on the battlefield to not use the shield for dual wielding would be because you've lost your shield or your shield has been destroyed in the battle, which can happen fairly quickly. So you would draw your backup weapon. What I personally would do, I would use my shield, use my axe, and have my sword in its scabbard at my hip ready to draw. And once I lose my shield, I switch my axe in my other hand and I draw my sword. So I'm ready to go again. If dual wielding with sword and shield is that good. Why wasn't it done all the time? Why would anyone use a big two-handed weapon that makes it impossible to use a shield? The reason is uh, reach and power. With two hands you can use a far longer weapon and control it really well than when you're wielding it with just one hand. So, wielding a really long spear, wielding a pike, you really want to use two hands for that. And in a battlefield situation, a long weapon like a pike is such a big advantage. Because you can offend your enemy and defend against the attacks without the enemy being able to reach you and offend you back. Unless he has a pike as well. So a uh, pike formation with huge, long, creaking pikes would be a case where you don't want to use a shield. But also armor. If you are wearing really, really heavy and good armor, you don't need a shield anymore. Anything you could block with the shield your armor will block as well. And if you're wearing that much armor, there's reason to believe your opponent might as well. And if your opponent is wearing really heavy armor, you want to 
wield your weapon with two hands. So get either more point control in the thrust, or you can wield a huge heavy weapon, a warhammer or something, and swing it in both hands and just better your enemy into submission with superior force. That is all about dual wielding I wanted to talk about today. What are your experience with dual wielding? How realistic do you think it is? And what mechanics would you use in-game to handle it? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and goodbye.